Uh, my mother and my father had separated, and then one night she just picked me, my brother, and my sister up and moved us into this organization that was completely unlike anything that we'd ever been used to. And you're 10 years old, you're in a, a overcrowded, what, trailer at the time or when, house? At that time it was in Brooklyn. Um, when we moved in, they were just, I mean, just an excessive amount of girls around our age group. In one room, we slept on foams on the floor. Uh, in the morning, you piled the foams up together into one bed. You sat on the floor to eat. The food was, I couldn't even really, I, I don't even remember what the food was. I just know I couldn't identify it because we didn't eat the same way. It was everything. mystery food. Yeah. You were 14 when you got back in, 15 when you were back in there. Well, I was 14. The first time? Um, when he started to try to introduce me into it, but I fought against it for a long time, and then he finally took it out when I was 15. And, again, you fought against it. I'm assuming that you were fighting at the last minute. I but fought. But it didn't matter. Yeah, he used to literally pick me up, and his, his, bed, his room was shaped like a huge octagon. I mean, it was just huge. And he would literally pick me up and throw me over his shoulder and throw me down on the bed. And I was constantly fighting, and I didn't understand because there was a book that he had called The Hell Book, and it had a very description, a very descriptive... Pass that to somebody behind you. Um, a very descriptive vision of what happens when you break your virginity at a young age. I think it was like we, were, we would boil in hell for eternity and all types of stuff. And I, I used to yell, I was like, I didn't understand because I was like, you wrote this book, you wrote this book, and now you're trying to do this to us. And then he would give stories about how the Prophet Muhammad married um, someone named Aisha at age nine and how it was okay, so it's supposed to be okay for us, and how whoever you break your virginity to first is the person that you owe your loyalty to, so this is what he had to do to us. And it just didn't feel right with him. It, it didn't because we looked at him as our father. You know, it, it's hard to try and transfer that relationship like my father to this person that I have to lay down with. You know, it's... it's so, uh, did, you, did you know of Pauline? I met Pauline when we were upstate. You knew when she got sent away? Yes. You knew when she got sent away? Mm -hmm. Did you think that that's what's going to happen to me? Is that what helped to keep you guys under control? Do you know that she was sent away to some place that nobody wanted to go to? Or how was it said? There were times you didn't know why people left. My sister was kicked out, and I did not know she was gone until after the van had pulled off. It's hard for people to understand why didn't you leave, but we was raised thinking that that was the, the best place to be. What he would tell us, he, he used to tell us on, on the land, um, the, peop the kids who was born or raised in the community, we had a red hexagon on our head, and if we ever left the community, the light would shine throughout the planet and the devil will know to get us, attack us, and you know, we'll never be nothing without him or we're misfits and ugly and you know, all this stuff will happen. So we just dealt with, you know. Well, Sergeant Tracy Bowman played an integral part in the investigation and making sure that this all came to an end. Welcome her to the show. Thank you so much. And Bill Osinski wrote the book, Ungodly. The true story of unprecedented evil, and I'm telling you, that's exactly what you guys are passing that book around. Please pass it. I want more people to see that just to be disgusted for a second. Where's it at right now? Raise your hand. You got it? Pass it down the road. Let some people take a look at it. But, Sergeant, talk to me. You got involved in the investigation when the authorities had already received enough complaints, but you didn't have enough evidence to bring them down, right? Correct. Um, we had received several anonymous letters, one of them being... Uh, Pauline's. We didn't know at the time, but of course eventually found out that she was the author of that letter. And we'd also received a diagram, an anonymous diagram, that outlined the compound, the land, there in our county. And it listed the different uh, structures on the land and where everyone lived. Like this was the children's house. This was uh, the girls' uh, house that, aid, that housed girls, you know, age seven through ten or whatever and there was also a portion attached to his house where a lot of the women and children uh, were housed and uh, it also listed the term concubines and the men lived in the barn and this diagram we received in September of 98 outlined uh, the different areas of the compound and I should say with cookies, go back to that picture of the pyramid sitting in the middle of nowhere. This is where, where are we at? What, what county are we in? We're in Putnam County, Georgia. Putnam County, Georgia. It's and in you the drive, middle of Georgia. You drive down the road and all of a sudden, <laughs> pot out. You see that? That's sticking up out of nowhere. Well, right. first off, the first time I was a cop and drove by that, I figured there's something going on over here. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, and it, it built that way over time. 
Well, now, it, while this is going on, this compound's there, you're trying to build up a case. Had Pauline not come forward, or you had not gotten so many people to come forward, this would still be going on today, would it not? Yes. I mean, how, was, what, how could you have stopped it? Yes, you couldn't. And it was difficult to stop even then. It, I, was, it, it was very difficult. And part of the reason why I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to take a break, but let's, let's go back in time for a second and how this organization even got off the ground. Back at the time that he started this, it was a time when, especially in New York, there was rife between the, the police, black Muslims, black Panther organizations, any, any civic organization. And so the police kind of didn't back off, but they did. If you thought you were getting ready to get in trouble and have Jesse Jackson and five other black leaders come into town and start kicking your doors down, I'm leaving him alone. But unfortunately, when we left him alone, we left him to do whatever he chose to do. Right. We'll talk to you about the movie coming. We'll be back right after this.